Okay, so we're here. Yes, that's right, one way. Very well blessed. Uh, so, uh, we've locked the door because the sweet, heavenly children keep coming in uh, doing things that I would have never done as a child. <laughs> Punching the alarm system and spraying fire extinguishers everywhere. I'm running away and waiting. Ah, 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 ah. That would just, just Kev. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we're just locking ourselves in because we're afraid. So, let's go. Okay, so step two, the second step. Uh, came to believe power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. A power greater than ourselves. So notice at this point, it's not saying God at this point in the step. So the first two steps are not really saying God. Now we might say it's God, and you I hope you take it for granted. But there's lots of people that don't believe in God. So they're seeking and they're searching and they're looking for something. So this is saying, I'm looking for a power. Because remember the first step, so I didn't have any power, or powerless. I don't have any power. I try to control everything and do everything, but in truth, when I stop and look, it never pans out. It never works out how I want it to work out. I think I have the power of control, but when I look, I really, really don't. So, therefore, we must find a power. And that power can't be us. And it can't be another human being. So he says, came to believe. So we... I'll use, I'll use Kev as an example because he's sat here. So we did the steps together and things. And uh, Kev didn't really believe in God, did you really? Well, Definitely didn't believe in God, did you, Kev? No. And so he's, it was like talking about God. And I said, let's just look at it like love. And he went, yeah, all right. And then he so, so said, well, who, who do you love? He said, well, I used to love my grandma and my granddad. I said, I'll do. I said, well, not your grandma and granddad, but the love you had for them. Because I know the scripture and it says God is love. So I think he, Sneak one in here, I don't care, get one right under the ribs on him. And he got that conception, and then he went like, but they did. And the human beings. And Kev worked this out <laughs> himself, in his mind, in his process as we're doing it. So therefore, it must be something else. And then just, we should look to the scripture that said, God is love. So therefore, it must be God. So came to believe a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Okay, so being restored. So does anybody understand get around about the fall? Don't mean that. Don't start with that 1980s punk band or all that. I don't want none of that. So, in Genesis, when you read the Bible and the creation of the world, and then sin comes into the world because it, it says that Adam and Eve walked with God. So they're in God's presence, they're together. It's like they're part of the same thing, he's with them. And he says, don't sin, don't do this. And they do it. So sin comes into the world. So that's what they call the fall. So before, everything was good with God and us. Now, without God, we're living this insanity. So we're looking to believe that we can be restored from this crazy thinking and actions back to God. So what we're saying is 
we, we're going to come to believe that God can restore us back to himself. That's kind of the Christian message that's within the steps. Okay? Uh, so first of all, so it's almost in two parts, but it's one thing. Uh, you need to be willing to believe and willing to seek. So this step is about willingness, nothing else. You don't even have to believe. All you have to be is willing to believe. Christians really, really get it wrong a lot when they try to evangelise, because they try to evangelise where they're at and say, tell them from up there. And they're not, people are not there yet. They only need to be willing to believe to make a, a really good beginning. I'm willing to seek him. So to think and to do something, you only have to be willing. That's all this step requires. Okay? If we define God, then he follows that we're going to talk about like things about God. So even though there's no God mentioned in it, in the step itself, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about God like how did we care? You know, kind of what's going on there, what's that feeling, what's the love, what's... We're going to have a, a conversation that God's going to get chucked into the mix. Okay, so this is from the big book about how it's known as. Because I'm going from that and the Bible. So the big book, texts, verses of scripture, and turns them into language that struggling alcoholics can understand. We text the Bible and makes it really simple for people to understand in their own context. So this is from a big book. We need to ask ourselves but one question. Do I believe or am I willing to believe that there is a power greater than myself? As soon as a person can say that he does believe or is willing to believe, we can empathically assure them that they are on their way. So, if you've been a Christian all your life, you've just born into it and everything, that's, that's amazing, but you still will have had points where, in your life, where you thought, is that real? What if I do this? Da, 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 da. At some point, for sure. So, am I willing to believe and am I willing to see God? So, that bit sounds alright. Am I willing to believe? When we're talking about alcohol, be quite easy to be willing to believe. Because you'd be absolutely on your knees by the time you get all drugs. You get to the point where you're doing it and you don't want to do it. Willingness would come, even against your own will. You'd be willing, you just wouldn't want it anymore. And that's what usually happens. But what about if it's sin? If it's just sin, are you willing to believe that God can restore you to sanity? So what, apart from alcohol and drugs, if you read this, what does anybody think the insanity is? Because if this is to restore us to sanity, there must be an insanity. What's the insanity, do you think, anybody? Any ideas or a guess? The yeah. mess in your life. The mess in your life? The curse that comes from the fall. Admitting you're insane in the first place. Admitting you're insane in the first place. Doing things over and over again that destroy you, gambling, yeah. pornography. So that's sin, isn't it? 
So the insanity of it is, so you think about Paul, that wretched man that I am. So I, you know, and he's supposed to be a saint, and he said, Paul, a good fella, wretched man that I am. He knows that he's insane. So we're in really good company. I really say some days, that's what I am. So the sanity that we're looking for is Jesus. So, so the insanity is sick? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That we all have. Mm. So you don't have to be an alcoholic or drug addict to do this. Mm. You just have to have sin inside you. So, who and what restores us back to God? If we look about like kind of the fall and the curse, it's Jesus. So Jesus is the way back to God. Okay, so willing to believe, but willing to seek. Now this is the bit that's kind of a bit different, isn't it? What do you think that means, willing to seek? So it's willing to seek God, but what would you have to do? Open mind and look at yourself.
So it's when, when both are together. So I'm always, I'm always reminding me of when Jesus was raised from the dead. It's really stuck with me since I've been a Christian that he ran it, he's raised from the dead when he appears to the apostles and disciples in this room. He sits down, he just appears out of nowhere, but he sits down and he eats. So it's not just, a, he's not a ghost, he's flesh and he eats food. So faith has to be real. It has to be what we do, what we are. Not just what we feel or what we think. Feelings can be wrong, you know, and, and they can deceive you, you know. It has to be what we do as well. So, okay, I'll just tell you something. Let's have a look. Has anybody got a bad hip yeah. you bad one, eh? Oh, man, he's got the bad one. That's fantastic. Okay. Mick. Yes. What I struggled with before I began to come to faith and someone suggested praying is I didn't know what I was praying to. So therefore, I didn't do it because I thought there was a like a right or a wrong way. I didn't I found it really strange because I had no concept of Jesus. So how do you go about when people are new? Because I have people that are new and they're like, well, I know there's no right and wrong way, but it's like you need something to sort of aim for, or um, like, because you're having a conversation, aren't you? But people always say, well, I don't know what to say, how should I say it? And mm. I, I struggle in really, because I don't want to say, oh, you should say this or you should say that. I try to say, just be honest, but then rather than do that, I don't do it, because I think, well, I can't talk to myself. So there's like a, a grey area there, I thought, where for someone who's very early in this life has started to pray for the first time, where does well, it go? So what I do is like what exactly what I did with Kev, so uh, is I say love. And I just say, tell me about love. And I say, oh, uh, takes two, the least, but do you love yourself? Yeah, so two plus one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I say, oh, I don't know. One and two, or more. I gathered, blah, blah, blah. I'll be there. You, you said that? Oh, I thought you said that. Yeah, yes. And I'll go, right, so what does it feel like? Well, it feels really, really good. Okay. Do you know anyone who's died? Yeah. I do, I do. And did you love them? Yeah. What did that feel like? It was horrendous. Ooh. So if you love, it must be a bit of pain. Oh. Yeah, that's true. Okay. And then I want to tell you about this geezer that died on the cross. And he went through the pain. And he came out to new life. Have you ever gone through the pain? No, I avoid it. Okay. Real love says go through the pain. When you're in pain, let's pray to love. So it's always about love. But the thing of, of that is the understanding that because what people do when they start to learn to pray, they pray and they might see something happen, they might see something change. But when a, a tough day comes, oh, it's not working, that God thing is not good, that's not good, that God thing. I'm feeling pain. So you need to understand love right from the beginning when you're helping people to understand God or even how to pray. So we did, uh, I went to see a couple today and uh, they've lost a little, little boy, a little boy's dad, four month old, um, he's in the house still because mum just can't part and he's on a coal mat in there and uh, I'm doing the funeral so I'm going around to see the family and uh, Little boy's been there for a week. She just can't let go. And uh, I went back and talked to her. I could just see she's miles away 
and she just lost because she would, wouldn't you? She lost the baby, you know, for goodness sake, and it's and still there, and they can't let go. And uh, I don't think they're Christians in real terms. And to say, is it okay for prayer for the baby? And they said, yeah. And I did that. That's all I did. That and that. And they broke for the first time together. They understood this. Being linked to that. Two of them all were gathered. Jesus was there. So what I'm doing, never thought, I didn't think about it, but what we're doing tonight is exactly what I did this afternoon. I didn't tell them what to believe in. I didn't take them through a cult or anything like that. I just asked them for a good prayer and showed them that. So for me, I think, right, it's always about that and trying to get people to understand that if you experience that, you need to know that. And that's the essence of, of Jesus. So if I put them two things there, like that, that's the cross really, and that's what it is, and that's what restores and sort of changes us all. So, uh, came to believe, this is what we're after. That's what we're after coming to believe. Love will ultimately lead to pain, and pain will ultimately lead to love. And you can't separate the two. If you get married and you're very much in love, one day one's going to pass away. You always, you might get cheated on, you might run off on you, whatever. You're always going to experience pain. But human beings do not want to go through the pain. But Jesus shows a new way. A way that nobody's ever even dreamed of. You know, in the old early church, what would happen is, they all these gods, they have loads of gods. And there's a little, uh, there's a bit of graffiti found on Nero's palace, they found it about 70, 80 years ago when they were excavating and it shows a picture, you could see it painted on it, it survived 2,000 years, in fact, like 15, 1,800 years, wherever it was and uh, it's got a man's body with a donkey's head nailed to a cross and it's got a picture of a young boy looking up at it I can't remember what the young boy is called but it says his name uh, worshipping his God, it says, it's satire, it's, it's, it's mocking, because how could a God suffer? He must be a fool like a donkey. Can't be real. It must be a joke. But it's not. It really is real. So in worldly terms, without the Spirit of God, Jesus would be a, he'd be a fool. He'd be foolish. You know, a God that comes down and suffers for you. He's a God, why would he? Because they don't understand this. And the reversal of the curse, the journey back to God, can only happen through understanding that. That's why the scripture, Jesus is the only way, is literal. There is no other way. And there is no other teaching in any religion that teaches that because that's Jesus so came to believe a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity is that that's what we're looking for and that is the reversal of the, the curse so if I'm just going to, the curse really is sin comes into the world and we're no longer in this connection with God so we have to come to understand this to find this again. And God comes and does it for us. Okay, all right. Uh, so shall we?
we have a lot. So the notion here then is as well. Uh, we have to get this. We can't fix ourselves. What happens? But the, the, what happens is uh, human beings try to fix themselves. So the kind of thing you can see it. I'm not doing right well. I'm a bit. I find a partner that'll make it better. And you still have this stuff inside. Doesn't work. Right, I'm going to Australia. That'll be. That'll do it. And then you take yourself all the way to Australia with it, and you're just miserable in the sunshine. Yeah. And what I need to do is I need to work really hard and get loads of money. The only you are is miserable in comfort. That's it. Mm. Because you can't fix yourself. We've all tried it, whether we know it or not. Mm. I'm feeling depressed. I've just got to think, think happy thoughts. Happy, 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 happy. Feel really good. Ah! And I've got to go out and mix with other people that really wear me up. Ah! Not happy, not happy, not happy. This isn't working. I'm going to have to think even harder. Happy, happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy. Happy. Happy, happy, happy. Yeah, happy, I'm happy. Everything's happy. Lovely. Have any money? No, I'm skin. Not happy. Not happy. We can't do it ourselves. True. So really importantly, our thinking won't save us. Because our thinking doesn't work. It only leads to more sin. Okay, so you can't fix yourself. Now I'm going to give you a scripture. So, uh, John 7. 17. I'll write it down. Okay. Just that one verse, mate. Yes, just that one verse, Mary. Right. Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Okay. God's will. So what did you say again, Mary? Anyone, oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Chooses. <laughs> Anyone? Anyone who chooses to do the will of God We'll find out. Find out the truth. So you've got a choice then. Came to believe a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. God's will. Your will. You have a choice. Which means choice. So you don't want to say about the fall. So, being created in God's image and being almost God-like, according to the scripture, means that we have free will, like God. So we can make decisions. So that's very, very, very powerful, however you look at it, because <coughs> human beings can decide whether they want to kill or love. You know, very, very, very powerful. And that's, that's almost acting like God, isn't it? It's being God-like. I give you the... to live, I take you there, and you die. That's playing God, isn't it? It's like the word, could, could say will. Yeah. So you've a choice in between. You've a choice. So... So the fall... was God saying, don't eat from that tree. Whatever you do, don't eat from that tree. All right, we we'll promise we won't. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> but they had a choice. The interesting thing about that choice is <clears throat> that so what they're saying, they go against God, so that's sin, so sin comes into the world. But the immediate sin is when God susses them and they hide him. God says, why are you hiding from me? So well, we're naked. Well, they told you you were naked. How did you know? They didn't have that shame in them before. There was no shame. And then <coughs> Eve says, no, it wasn't my fault with that snake. Said, All right, yeah. And then Adam, Adam boxes this off beautifully. If it weren't God, he'd have got away with it, I'm telling you. He says, listen God, it weren't me, it was that woman. <laughs> but then it was even one day. It wasn't just that woman, it was that woman that you give me. So it wasn't God. So he goes, I ain't got a minute. No. Can you imagine? They said, just get out, get out, come on, get out of the garden, come on, off your path, right around. Right. I, I just read something before I come out, actually, that said, Eve didn't actually sin. Ooh. She was fooled by it, but Adam willingly sinned because he knew what he was doing. I'm not ready for him to believe that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it's Adam who brought sin, it's man who brought sin into the world, but it was he, he willingly sinned because he knew. But they both knew not to do it because God told them. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah so, the, so the thing of sin is, is sin the punch? Or is sin the anger inside or the bitterness and the resentment that throws the punch? They both hurt. So they both sinned. But it's like, it's interesting though, stuff in it, that kind of a way. But what we're saying, back to this, is saying we've got a choice. We've got a choice. So if we go back to that, came to believe a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Sanity being following Jesus, being set free from our sin, or addictions, or whatever you want to call it. Where do we put our will? Where do we place it? So, let's have a look. His kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Okay. So in other versions it'll say, seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things that we're giving to you. So uh, seek first God. What do you think about that? Seek God first. So we're seeking there. So seek first the kingdom of heaven and you'll get all the other stuff anyway. What's the other stuff, do you think? What do you think? What's in the... Is it a study Bible? No. No? What do you think? Prayers answered. Sorry? Prayers answered. Prayers answered. 
Freedom. Freedom. Mm. Seek first the kingdom of God. And you'll get freedom. Having your needs met. Having your needs met. Peace. Peace. Family. Family. things seek first the kingdom of God again that's the equivalent in my pocket <laughs> it might happen yes it will it is but that won't be the motivation will it and that's what the important thing about it, this bit now. is never happened to me <laughs> yeah. it's not that you won't well, it's that if you go seeking with an agenda for yourself you're not really seeking God. Exactly. So that's that's the point of this. Seek God first. Mm. And then you get everything that you need. And sometimes that'll be money, sometimes that'll be lots of different things. But you'll get everything that you need to do God's will. Mm. And that's a fact. He, he that's does, a fact for us all. It does actually say in that verse, mate, doesn't it? Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And his righteousness, so it you, does. You're yeah. the right thing, haven't you? Yeah. Because yeah. before all these things will be given to you. <laughs> I think I've spelled that right. Well, that's a bit of that. Is that right? <laughs> that's a first for a dyslexic pick of that. Well, okay. well, Is that right? Yeah, it yeah. does. <laughs> I'm very pleased with myself, huh? I might have done that again or something. Do you know what I mean? Now I can spell it. So. Your agenda has to be to seek God mm. for the sake of love. Yeah. Otherwise, it becomes self-seeking. And you're praying to the God himself. Have you ever done that? Invented God in your own head? Mm. I, I have. You know, like, Right, Lord, this is what this is what we need to do, right? So, um, what do we need? What we need to do? Listen, listen, Jesus, sit down. I've got this one covered. I'll go. I'll go out and feed four thousand people by Tuesday. Leave it with me. And look, that's me. And I go. Might as well go. Oh, thank me. Thank me very much. Thank me very much. I'll tell them for thank me very much because. I don't want the suffering, do I? Don't want that suffering bit of love. Don't really want the sacrifice. Don't mind if you do a bit of sacrifice, but I don't really want that. Oh, hang on a minute. Love is sacrifice. What someone explained to me about the kingdom of God that made a massive penny drop was, oh, I can you look for kingdom of where? Where's the kingdom of God? Because I thought, I assumed the kingdom, I thought, is it? I thought it was another place, and he said, the kingdom is when you make God your king. Once you come under God, you're in his kingdom. I thought, ah, and just that little notion that the kingdom, because I picked a kingdom, it's a place, it's like, is it heaven? I used to think it were heaven. I thought, am I seeking heaven? And what he said is, a kingdom in the Bible is whoever your, um, your king is, you're in, you're in their kingdom. So when you make God your king, you're within his kingdom. That's what you're seeking. And just that, Little difference there, but a massive difference for me. Yeah, it's quite good, that, isn't it? Yes, it is. So, who, uh, if we believe and we seek mm. and we're restored back to God, remember there's another 10 steps after this, right? So, I'm not going to push forward too, too far. Then, just be really honest who are your things? In their own mind that they live in the kingdom of heaven now. Just be honest with yourself. And say a little prayer. Lord, Lord, just reveal to us in our hearts and in our minds where the kingdom is. And if we live in it or not. In Jesus' name. Okay. Yeah. The kingdom is within. The kingdom is within. Get it waving. 
It's what, Kev? Get in the way of it. We get in the way of it. Preach within. Preach within. Sinless. It's sinless. You have to be here in a certain way to be living in it. Right. I know when I came to do step two, I knew step one told me if I took a drink, I was powerless. Yes. But what trouble is, is when I gave up the drink, I was empty and I had a void inside myself that was constantly emptying all the time. So I had to believe in something that could fill that up, a power greater than me. Yes. That could, because I was insane, yeah. completely bonkers. It could restore me to sanity if I was willing to believe. Sorry. That's the difference. Yeah. So what's the, so oh, let's do this then, okay. This might be a bit, this thing, so. What's the difference in your life from when you were drinking, you didn't know Jesus, and now? Faith, God, love, everything. Faith, God, love. And what does that do when you are out living your life? What's the difference? I've no faith. Mm. I know love. I don't, and I. I'm aware of me and the way I react and my head is it's like when I've been away uh, I will always be insane with the result away from God but I don't turn away from God but it's there and I have to like sometimes just let go and let, let God do things for me instead of me doing well, could you do that before? No. All right, Kev, what's the difference from what your life used to be like and what it's like now? What did it used to be like? Oh, good. <laughs> it's a good word, that. Really scared. <laughs> really angry. Really lost. I don't know. Just having a strength, stacking the stuff that is no way. Brilliant. Maybe um, when you were using, sorry, sorry about that, it's not what you talk. When, when you were using, mm -hmm. what were you like then? Um, dark, chaotic, um, lonely, yeah. Mm. yeah. And now, even with the troubles and in life and ordinary life, what's it like now though?
and meet you with them. For that's how I know they live in the kingdom of God. And so can you. So can you. Okay. With this step, really, what have you got to lose? So do you think you could say, well then we're talking about Jesus and he just appears, but he sits down and eats and he's flesh. When he appears to Thomas, he says, who didn't believe? So Thomas didn't really believe that Jesus had been raised from the dead. And he says, I'll only believe if I can see the wounds and put my fingers in them. That mm. <laughs> he felt that, that day, do you? <laughs> Tom, yeah. Ah, oh, no, you're all right, you're all right, no. No, come here. Put your hands in there. Ah, don't want to put your hands in there. Ah, I believe. And seeking. So do you think, is this, what do you think if I say, I'm not telling you that this is right, I'm just going to ask you what you think. So that 
když jim máme co je. Jesus died on that cross, which is that, that love 
course we can. So you brought all three of you when we spoke earlier. You've been through a lot of pain. Something you had in common. But you could have never understood that love were connected to it. So the biblical notion is that we confess. So we confess what we are, the sins. We stop hiding and pretending. Yes, I did have you off. Yes, I did spend with my kids money. Yes, I did do that. Yes, I did. Yes, I am. Yes, I did, 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 did. But we believe. Yeah, I'm taking responsibility. I'm taking that responsibility. And then just for that moment, I believe that Jesus died for me. And that's when your heart's opened. And you can walk away. You'll get it, it'll hit you. You can walk away and go back to doing the same things, but your life will never be the same again. Mm-hmm. And all you'll do is you'll keep trying to find it in your head again, but you'll already be forgiven. Mm-hmm. And the notion of the theology that we teach about the cross is this. So you can do it every day then. But you're saved if you do them things. Even if it's just for a second, it's real. I've seen it, I've experienced it, go right. Like Mary Ann just said as well, for me, when you um, let God's love in for the first time and you start to feel forgiven, that's only when you then start loving yourself as well. Yeah. Because um, I couldn't love other people, but I especially couldn't love myself. The other sort of loving yourself that people say you, you look really insecurity, yeah. so an ego. But only when I let God in first and felt that, that I could really start to love myself, my real self. Yes. Because I knew he loved me. Yeah. And I knew I'd forgive him. Yeah. So without God's love, I can't forgive myself, so I'm definitely not going to be loving myself. And if I can't love myself, I can't love other people. I, so I you end up stuck in it. How can you truly love other people if you can't love yourself? And that loving of yourself has to come from the fact that God really loves you. And like Kev says, it's, it's complete forgiveness. There's no catches to it. There's no, no. There's no missing bits. It, it's full. Yeah. And once you get that, you start to then feel forgiven, start loving God back, loving yourself. You've got that relationship going. Then other people can... It's like when you, you learn the true meaning of love, pain, God will give you the strength to forgive. Yeah. Mm. I did that with my dad. So we said in one of the script, one of the things we read earlier, didn't we? Uh, that Mary read, you'll get that revelation. Mm. It was was it John? It was in John, wasn't yeah. it? John seven seventeen. I think I think it was. John seven seventeen. Yeah. yeah. So you'll you you get that revelation when you lie in your will with God. Mm. You, you, more is revealed. So why is it then, do you think, that uh, we do this, we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior into our heart, um, we, we can feel this great stuff, and then we go away, and we start feeling bad again, and we still sin. Why do we think there is? Self-will. And fear and stuff like that. Still trying to avoid pain. Still trying to avoid pain. And looking for pleasure as well. Yeah, well, even, habit. Habit. even habit. Yeah, yeah, even habit, yeah. Because we live in a fallen world. So because we still live in a fallen world. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. 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 That's the thing. The world's corrupted. Yeah? And it's all around us. And we're trying to live our life in a fallen world. When you go through life with true love, you're not scared of getting bored. You're not scared of it. And when fear starts to go, the only fear you've got left is the fear of God. And the longer you feel like you're living in the kingdom, you feel protected as well from the fallen world. So I, I can walk around in a fallen world. Not, I'm still going to be, I do certain things, but I feel more protected than what I did. Uh, the tempt- I don't go to the same places. I don't interact with the same people. I don't want the same things because I'm following the kingdom, not, not the worldly terms more. When I lived in the world, I saw, I see things from the world, pleasure, uh, money, drugs, drink, but now I'm living in the kingdom, I'm seeking what, <coughs> trying to, what God wants, 
and that protects me as mm. well. It makes me feel safe and it also gives me a bigger purpose. Mm. Never had a purpose before, we're just running around trying to find as much pleasure or avoid as much pain as I could. Where in, in God's kingdom, I don't have to run around to look for anything because I've already found it. Yeah. Amen. The agenda's different as well. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah. He actually starts convicting you about those things. You want to change them. Yeah. So that, like, I mean, I won't too much into it because we're going to finish in a minute, but we'll just do right quick because we always talk about that. So that, um, so you know, when kind of you said, sure enough, I've took some responsibility. That's what's really, really important in understanding Christianity. So it's like uh, the devil and God. And what's really easy, imagine, do you get up every morning and call, say, God, you are the devil. Would you, you won't do that, would you? Sure never, like. never. But we do. People do. Call God the devil. Because I'll tell you what happens. You get convicted of your sin. And most Christians from different different cultures, different things, different Christians here in this church as well, will get convicted of something and they'll say, the devil or the enemy is going in. The Holy Spirit's convicting you of your sin. Amen. Uh, yeah. It's God. Okay, yeah. And you're calling God the devil. Oh dear. Well, good luck with that one. Oh dear. Good luck with that one. Should I thank him? You should thank him. Yeah. So gratitude is the most important part of your Christian faith. And that's what will change your thinking. Yeah. That's what will keep you in the kingdom. That's what keeps you right. But remember when I said, human beings don't want to go through the pain. That means I don't want it to be revealed what I really am. Because I really am that sinner. Mm -hmm. And that is the most crucial part of Jesus dying on the cross. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it doesn't get taught enough. Christians who grasp it reach the heights of do amazing things. The ones that don't really struggle because you're constantly oppressed and not moving forward and constantly trapped because they feel really bad the, the devil call the devil yeah the devil condemns us exactly. but the Holy Spirit convicts us <laughs> exactly yeah. so and you've got to know the difference yeah. oh, yes, yes, yes. because Imagine a world with, well, there's billions of Christians, isn't there, in different de denominations. And imagine 90% of them calling God the devil. Because that's what it is. Because they don't understand the conviction of the Spirit. But when you let him come in, it brings so much freedom. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, this is, this is like crucial. This is crucial for all Christian belief. And it's, it, that is the understanding of Jesus on the cross, really. That's what that is. And that's why Paul says, I just preach Christ crucified. Not really bothered about what else. That's all he preaches. Because if you get that, you get this. So basically, God shows you that you're a sinner. Mm. So you can thank him for setting you free on the cross. Amen. He doesn't want you trapped in the sin. And we've been going, the enemy's all over me. Look what the devil's doing. Because we haven't took any responsibility. We're not giving it back to God. It's the, it's, it's the opposite way around. I think when we get convicted as well, we need to know what to do with it. Yeah. That's where the insanity is. Yeah. And that's where the insanity is, yeah. 
Yeah, the insanity is that we don't know the difference. Mm. We can't say you don't know because I've told you. True, yeah. So, <laughs> all kind of religions and everything have this in it, don't they? Gratitude. But none of, them, none of them have gratitude for the pain. Only Christianity. The pain of God showing you what you are. Because he doesn't want you trapped in it. How can you get out of it if you don't know what it is? Mm, and all along, you've been calling it the enemy. And it requires humility, doesn't it? And it always comes back to humility to accept that you're wrong. And you're still a sinner. Mm. Even if you don't want them to all know. Mm. You really are. And what that does, I swear, what this does, all that, if you do that, it fixes mental health. All sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff get changed. I'm not saying there are people with genuine mental health illnesses that need medication and stuff like that. Of course there are. But this changes your entire thinking yeah. and starts to we mend you and almost reprogram you in Christ yeah. instead. Christians, right, give the enemy too much coverage. <laughs> Jesus done, he just says, get out of the way, come on, kill it. <laughs> yeah. Christians give him too much power. Always. You have no power. Mm. Are you ready? There's this person called Jordan Peterson. He's not a Christian, but he's a psychologist, and he explains the the Moses, um, the um, snake on the. He puts it on the cross, and he says, when everybody's scared of it, he says, guess what God does? He he does exactly what psychologists do. He says, look at what you're scared of. So if you look at the snake, he doesn't chase the snakes away, he doesn't make them disappear. He says, make a stick, put a snake on it, make everybody look at it, which is what the psychologists do. So. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing because they know it works. They know it works. But remember, what we're saying is first, you have to open your heart and believe that he died on that cross for you, just for you. Everybody else, but especially for you. Mm. And when you get that, this should fall into place. Be very, very aware of this. The enemy is at work, and mainly in Christians. Mm. The enemy is mainly at work in Christians, and in churches, <coughs> and places where Christians gather. Everywhere. Because the enemy doesn't want you doing the work of God. Where else would he be? Mm. Paul, Paul said, didn't he, we are not unaware of the devil's schemes. Yeah. He knew how he worked. Yeah. And he was in, in the warfare, he knew how to deal with it, didn't he? Yeah, and that's what this is. Mm. That's what Jesus taught and did. It's what Paul taught and it's what we teach. And any other gospel is in the true gospel. Mm. Check, check, when you read your Bible, check it. If you do, Basis, you can't fall off because it all fits. That's why egos is that one, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And, and delusion. I, I thought you meant to, you blasphemy God's name. I'm going, no, I'm no. Gonna, I won't want to do it that. Is, it's a, it I'm sorry, I got, I got delusion then thinking, is he, is he saying we cursing God? I, I wouldn't want to do that. No. But actually, what you do, you do curse God by. Saying God's the enemy, but it's the conviction of the spirit. There's a distinct difference, and it's really, really important. It's the most important part of any Christian faith, because that's how you get close to God. That's how you get free from addictions. Yeah. That's how you reunite really back to God, and that's how you walk in the kingdom. That's how you know how to love and be free. Okay, that's step two. So, any questions? Before we finish, anybody or anything? Brilliant. Right, Darth Vader. Paul's very strong in you, Luke. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Luke.
Luke chapter 4. Okay? Alright, so do we get kind of remember its action as well as... I was just thinking, mate, that's why this is good for everybody. Yeah, it's not, it's not that's what we try to do, it's not yeah. just drugs and alcohol, but drugs and alcohol are a good way of, of yeah. relating to sin. Because you can easily, if you're not addicted to drugs and alcohol, haven't been, you can quite easily say, that's sin. We can see you are saying that. So it's quite a good way of mm. people who are not from addicting background to kind of grasp it really, isn't it? Mm. But if you don't get anything else out tonight, get that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let God come to you mm. and thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Instead of calling him the enemy. He loves you that much. Mm. And kids are out. The thing that stops that doing is your own pride and ego. Afraid of the people finding out and Fear. you know. Mm. You should be doing it with joy. Mm. And that's walking in the kingdom. Oh, them three. They're in the kingdom of God. Whether they knew it or not, they definitely are. Because of where they were walking before mm. and where they're walking now. And the effect that they have on others. Mm. And you can see it. You can see the kingdom of God quite clearly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, Dora. Have a brilliant day. Go home. <laughs> <laughs>